In this video, we're going to take a look at the fully assembled version of the Mons Geek M1W, which was released this week. Thanks to Akko for their continued support in sending this one over for a review. For 5% off, please see the Akko affiliate link below or use discount code KEEBFACE when ordering from Akko.com. The Mons Geek M1 fully assembled is the first fully assembled keyboard from Mons Geek, and its addition to the lineup means that you can get the M1W as a bare bone or fully assembled. The W stands for wireless, as this is a wireless tri-mode keyboard. In the box you get the fully assembled keyboard, a Tempest mod sticker, a plastic dust cover, a switch puller, a keycap puller, an allen key, a coiled cable, the manual, some force brake mod stickers, and a full spare set of TPU double shot paint mount stabilizers. These are the same as the pink Akko double shot stabilizers you get in the ACR lineup and they're really nice. With the fully assembled version you get a set of the relatively new Akko V3 Piano Pro switches which are factory lubed, purple plate mount stabilizers which are factory lubed, a set of side printed shine through PVT gradient keycaps and it comes with a polycarbonate plate as usual. The build looks really nice and clean, the keycaps look and feel nice quality but let's see how it sounds stock out of the box. There we have it, and of course this was always going to be a really nice sounding fully assembled keyboard. The Mons Geek M series keyboards have a great sound and feel and do really well with both budget and high end build outs. The keycaps feel really nice quality, the Akko V3 Piano Pros are really nice but a little on the light side for me if I'm honest. I will say that the stock purple stabilizers could be better, there is audible rattle on the spacebar stabilizer, and the rest of the stabilizers just feel a little bit on the rough side. Unlike the original M1 I have from the first batch, there is no case reverberation sound that I can hear when hitting the keys on the bottom row with this one, even though the force brake mod stickers are in the box so must not be installed. The gasket feels solid when I know these to be quite soft and flexy gaskets, indicating the case dampening is tight under the PCB. I imagine this is what's helping to eliminate the case reverb, but I'll see if anything looks different when I take it apart. I want to test this one with no foams at all to see how it sounds, so I'm going to fully disassemble it. That that means keycaps off, switches out and stabilizers out. Case disassembly is obviously super easy with just the case screws to remove, with the six case screws out you can lift off the top case, tilt up the plate and PCB assembly and disconnect the door to board and battery wires. Next I need to disassemble the plate and PCB, you just remove the plate screws from under the PCB and then you can separate the plate and PCB and remove the plate dampening and switch sheet. In the bottom case you can see it's got the pour on case dampening pad and an insulating plastic layer underneath that. The 6000 milliamp hour battery capacity is provided by these two 3000 milliamp hour batteries which are nicely countersunk into the bottom case and covered with plastic. Everything else looks very familiar to the other two M series keyboards I've tested. This is running just the one case foam pad whereas the others I tested ran two. It used to be a thinner pad on top with the hot swap sockets cut out and a really soft foam pad underneath that. It feels to me like this single case foam is thicker and much denser and I think this has made the gasket much more solid than it was before because that softer bottom foam pad that was there before isn't there now to allow for some gasket movement while dampened. I preferred how it was before as you could remove one of the two foams to free up the gasket a little bit but keep some dampening in there with the other. It's kept the main features I like with regards to typing sound and feel which is a 1.6mm PCB with no flex cuts and the stock polycarbonate plate. I love the simplicity of the M series key Keyboards, a nice and simple CNC machine job on the case which is what keeps the cost down, the nice brass accent pieces on the sides to break up the chunky case a bit, and the understated Mons Geek logo CNC'd into the bottom just makes for a really simple stylish and solid case. 
So for the second configuration, I rebuilt with no foams at all, but I stuck the plastic layer in the bottom for insulating the PCB from the case. I ran the purple stabilizers again, but I balanced the spacebar wire, which was one of the most bent and twisted wires I've seen yet, and I did my usual lube job on all the slabs. I lubed the stems and housings with Crytox 205 grade zero, and the wires with dielectric grease. Let's hear how it sounds with no foams. So it's decent with no foams, but in my opinion, if you like your keyboards with minimal foam and the sound profile this creates, this one needs plate foam for me. It sounds and feels a little hollow and kind of clunky for want of a better word, and plate foam will just tidy this up, but shouldn't make it sound too foamy. It will also keep the gasket free as there will still be no case foam underneath hindering it. I'm really not enjoying these purple stabs, so I want to try the double shot set and see how they sound with the same treatment I gave the purple ones. Here's how it sounds with just the plate foam, without the switch sheet or case foam, and with the double shot TPU stabilizers. And there we have it, much nicer in my opinion with the plate foam, and I much prefer the sound and feel of the double shot stabilizers. As I've said in my previous videos, the M series keyboards are the best in stock budget aluminium keyboards that I've tested. The update to wireless is the major update, but isn't really a big one for me personally, as I'm not too bothered about wireless these days. If you prefer your keyboards with wireless, it's well worth the extra $10 compared to the M1. Of course, it works totally fine with connection to three devices in Bluetooth mode and to one more with the two. 2.4 gigahertz dongle. I actually quite like that they've concealed the wireless switch under the caps lock keycap on this one to keep it clean on the case, and it's the first switch position like this that I've actually been able to operate with my finger without needing a pen. The key for me with the N1W is picking between the barebone and the fully assembled now that this one is available. The assembled version is a solid keyboard available in three colorways so far, all with matching gradient keycaps. The black version is already available in ISO layout for an extra $10. The keycaps are really nice quality and the Echo V3 Piano Pros are a nice switch to balance cost and quality if you like lighter linear switches. At $110 for the barebone and $140 for the fully assembled, you're only paying $30 for the switches and keycaps. It's going to be hard if not impossible to build out the barebone to a comparable quality for $140 total with a budget of just $30 for switches and keycaps. If you like the keycaps and switches or have a fixed budget of $140, $150, you're best off running 
coming with the fully assembled version for sure. If you ask me which I'd buy, I'd get the barebone. The reason I'd go barebone are because I'm not a fan of shine through or side printed keycaps, the Piano Pro switches are too light for me, and I think the keyboard is well worth spending an extra $150 on for a set of switches and keycaps. I'd get a set of the cheaper PBT fans keycaps or something like that, like the Golden Katakanas for $80, and then obviously a nice set of switches that I like, committing the extra cash to build it out how I want it. Whether you go barebone or fully assembled, this is a fantastic buy and you won't be disappointed. And that's it. Thanks a lot for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.